Hi, Kingfishers and Wagtails. Well, here's your next story about dogs in space. So this is now moved on a little bit. So it's not about Lyca, it's about two other dogs. Um, but I've got my little dog with me here. You ready? It's Rex Reader. Right, we're well, going to try and put you out on the... Oh, look at that, Rex. Brilliant. Stay still though, won't you? We don't want you flying off into space, do we? So are you ready for this story then? This is the amazing true story of Belka and Strelka. Gosh, they're funny names, aren't they? Moscow, USSR, 1951. It was a cold, gloomy night in the back streets of Moscow. A pack of scrawny, hungry dogs were rummaging through dustbins, hoping to find a few scraps to eat when a delicious smell wafted towards them. Oh, look, I think, I think Rex can smell sausages. I think he can smell sausages. I think he's quite hungry. Rex, go and sit back down. Sit down. Six, sit, sit, stay. Stay, he's going to stay. Following their noses, they found a man placing morsels of fresh meat on the pavement. Most of the dogs were shy and stayed in the shadows. But two little scruff balls, their noses twitching, bravely came forward. They gobbled up the meat and cheekily looked up as if to ask for more. The man, who was called Oleg, smiled. He knew at once he had found what he was looking for. I wonder what it was he was looking for. Oleg was a scientist at Moscow's Space Centre and was hoping to find two special dogs who might be brave enough for a very important mission. The two new arrivals were named Belka and Shrelka. They were given a tasty dinner and a kennel of their own. For the first time in their lives, they had enough to eat and a warm place to sleep. There were dogs of every kind at the centre. Some were bold and playful, some were snappy or growly, some were gentle and well behaved, but Belka and Shrelka stood out. They were clever, calm, brave and obedient. Oleg was, des was delighted. All the dogs were given a health check, then weighed and measured to make sure they weren't too big or too small for the mission. Belka and Shrelka were just the right size. After all the tests were complete, Oleg had to decide which two dogs would be chosen. Finally, he made up his mind. He gathered the dogs together to make his announcement. Can you see? They're all sat waiting, aren't they? Patiently waiting. Who's it going to be? The two brave little strays had f they had, he had found on the streets were soon to become the most famous dogs in the world. Belka and Shrelka were going to be space dogs. Belka and Shrelka were going on a special mission to space to fly all the way around the Earth, a journey called an orbit. They seemed to know something exciting was happening. They wagged their tails. They were ready to start training straight away. The two little cosmonauts needed to get used to how it would feel inside the rocket. Some of the exercisers were practising staying calm with loud noises around them, spending time in special kennels to get used to being on their own, away from people. Ooh, let's see if Rex can do that, shall we? And staying on a platform that shook under their paws. They practised again and again until they were finally ready for their mission. There was only one thing left to do. Put on their special doggy spacesuits. A red one for Strelka and a green one for Belka. They look really cool, don't they? Launch day, 19th of August, 1960. Finally, the big day arrived. The rocket stood on the launch pad, ready for blast off. Belka and Strelka were ready too. The rocket shuddered, shook, rumbled and roared, then broke free and soared into the sky. Up and up it went through the clouds until it reached space. Belka and Shrelka's great adventure had begun. Exciting! All was still and quiet as Belka and Shrelka began their orbit. The ground crew watched on their television monitors. Everything was working as it should. But why were Belka and Shrelka so still? Everyone held their breath. 
Belka and Shrulka were not moving at all. Minutes turned into hours. It was feared the brave little space dogs had not survived the launch. Oh no, this is awful. Then suddenly someone thought they saw Belka wriggle. Could it be? Yes, and then Shrelka started to wag her tail and bark. The team cheered and clapped and hugged each other. Soon Eve, some even cried with joy and relief. Belka and Shrelka were alive. Round and round the earth they flew. They saw the blue of the oceans and the greens of browns of the land shining against the blackness of space. Not even a human had seen such sights. Belka and Shrelka circled the earth many times until at last it was time to go home. As the spacecraft zoomed back into Earth's atmosphere, flames began to lick at the windows. Down and down they plummeted at high speed. The team at the space station grew very quiet. Landings could be dangerous. Then suddenly a parachute opened and slowed the spacecraft down. Belka and Shrelka watched the ground getting closer and closer. And closer. The rescue team was waiting. Thump! They rushed into the spacecraft and flung open the door. Two little faces peeped out. Two little tails started wagging and two brave little dogs were gently lifted out safe and well. Belka and Shrelka were home. Within a few hours of landing, news of Belka and Shrelka's amazing journey had spread all around the world. They were celebrated and loved everywhere they went. Pictures of them appeared everywhere on stamps and postcards, on television and in newspapers. Even films and cartoons were made about their adventures. Everyone wanted to see the two brave little dogs that had flown around the earth. But the story didn't end there. Not long afterwards, Shrelka gave birth to six healthy puppies and both dogs went on to live long and happy lives. Oleg was very proud of his two little cosmonauts, for without them, one of the most wondrous missions of all might never have taken place. Belka and Shrelka's brave adventure had blazed a trail for humans to follow, which just goes to show that it doesn't matter where you come from, if two little dogs from the streets of Moscow can make history, then perhaps you can too. And here's a picture of the space race, looking at all the animals. So have a good look at that and then I'll read it out for you. So you can see all the different animals that are there. Okay. So in 1960, the year Belka and Shrelka successfully orbited Earth, the United States and the Soviet Union were in the middle of a space race to see who could push the boundaries of space exploration the furthest. So in 1947, both nations were working to send animals on missions to space. In 1947, American scientists launched the first living creatures in space and there were fruit flies! Fruit flies! In 1949, they sent up a monkey called Albert II. Unfortunately, he did not survive the mission. In 1951, can you see that there? Soviet scientists launched more than 50 dogs. They had to be small enough to fit into the spacecraft, weigh between six and seven kilograms, and measured no more than 35.5 centimetres in height. So about the size of my dog, Bo. And then we've got in 1960, on board Belka and Shrelka's flight in 1960, there were a range of living things, including 40 mice, a rabbit, two white rats, insects and plants. And then in 1963, it says, I'm going to have to move it, I can't see. The French scientist launched the first and only cat ever to be sent into space. Her name was Felicit. In the mid-1970s, the space race has fizzed out. And in recent years, scientists from all around the world have worked together on missions to space. So that is the animal space race, but it hasn't finished. There is more to come on our space race. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. 
I've got a feeling Rex fell asleep, don't you? I think you've got a bit bored in the story. Come on, it's about dogs in space. You should be really pleased about it, shouldn't you, Rex, really? I think he is really happy, isn't he? Okay, bye, everybody. Bye.